You want to know what teachers make? Teachers make a difference. What do you make? It's National Teachers Day here in the United States. Time to celebrate a most virtuous profession. Of course, you know that I will have a contrarian viewpoint because it seems like I have one about everything. Um, full disclosure before I begin this little rant, I am a teacher. I'm a public school teacher. I've been a private school teacher. I have taught at colleges and universities. I have taught in the big, wide open, private market, the free market, where if I don't give my customers exactly what they want, they will fire me. They will stop taking, they will stop using my services. Um, and so all of that is my perspective. Now you, that may make you question what I have to say, or it may make you like really take what I have to say in and, and consider it. Both are good. Um, but that's my perspective. I am a teacher when I talk about this. Um, People uh, vastly overrate the teaching profession. There's this idea that the teaching profession is full of virtuous people, that it is a virtuous profession, that teachers are hardworking, selfless individuals that care about the children, and their job is the most important job because the children are the most important thing. The children are our future. Um, teachers have this massive like social benefit from being in their profession. A lot of teachers really self-identify as a teacher very heavily and, and hype up the profession and what they do quite a bit. Um, and I really want to kind of tear that down a little bit. And I want not just to give you my perspective, but to have you think about your perspective on it as well. Um, let's think about, before we really begin, let's think about uh, the public school system here in the United States. Now, if you, um, if you grew up in another country, um, if you grew up in, in mostly in the Western countries, you had compulsory education, I'm going to assume. Here in the United States, it's 13 years. In Canada, it was 14 years for a long time. Um, and it varied just how much you have to do depending on what country you're from. But you probably had a certain significant portion of your years taken up by compulsory schooling. That is, you were re legally required to go to school. Here in the United States, by the way, if you fail to send your children to school, you can go to jail. Uh, the school school accountability review board can send you a couple letters, and if you still don't send your kid to school, they'll come get you, take you to court, and if they find out find you in like willful defiance of the law, they will send you to jail. It has happened; it can happen again. If you refuse to go to jail, of course, you have uh, force being used against you to send you to jail. So yes, you are required to go to school. Maybe your parents never told you they would go to jail if you didn't go to school. They may have told you like, oh, it's important to go to school to get a good job and stuff. Um, but that's that's the reality here. And our public education system, at least in the United States, is um, is by objective measures um, not that good, right? Um, getting a little bit worse as time goes on, despite spending much, much more money over the years, it's getting worse, right? So if we look at our outcomes and we look at what we do, ed education, the schooling, this is a public schooling thing, uh, the people who spend all the time with the children probably ought to share some of the blame for any kind of failure that's there. That is not a popular position. It's uh, when you're in the teaching profession, it's all about how bad the kids are, how bad the parents are. Um, it's never about like there's bad teachers, but we know there's bad teachers. Think about those 13 years of compulsory schooling that you had to do in the United States. 14, if you grew up in Canada a couple of years ago, I think they got rid of that 14th year that uh, 13th grade um, or whatever, whatever whatever number of years you had to go if you're outside of uh, North America. Um, think about how many good teachers you had. I want you to just think about all the teachers. Think about how many good teachers you had. Now, I had a lot of music teachers. I grew up to be a musician. Of course, I'm going to think some of them are good. I'm going to thank them for them. Like, uh, you know, my high school band directors were excellent, excellent people and were very, very good for my development and great teachers. Uh, my junior high band director was great. Um, I had, but if you think about just your core subjects, like English, math, that kind of stuff, how many of them were really good teachers and had a big impact on your life? I could think of about one. I could think of about one, uh, who was uh, Mrs. Ferdinandson, Caroline Ferdinandson, my 11th grade English teacher, uh, who had a big impact on me as a, as a reader of literature. And other than that, most of my core subjects, I could, I, they were, they were just neutral, like, they didn't do anything in particular bad or good, or they. Or if I do remember them, they were like straight up bad teachers. So I do remember some straight up bad teachers out there in the mix. And your experience may be different, may be similar, but I'm gonna guess that you can count on one hand the number of really good teachers you had, unless you're just insanely lucky. Um, 
Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that we, we really don't have a profession of like great teachers. It's not, it's not a high quality profession when we actually look at the data for how people operate. Um, so that idea is kind of false. There's also this idea that the profession is virtuous. It's a virtuous profession. There is no virtuous profession. There are only virtuous individuals. Um, if there's a person over there who is virtuous and he's a teacher, that does not make me as a teacher virtuous, right? We are only virtuous separately. This has kind of do kind of to do with um, identity politics. Um, this idea that you know some women are victims of sexual assault, therefore women are victims of sexual assault, and if you're a woman, then you are a victim. Um, this sort of transfer of traits within a group. Uh, it happens subtly, uh, but it happens a lot in the teaching profession. There is this idea, you know, oh, go to a go to a dinner party and say, I'm a teacher. People are like, oh my God, you're, you're a teacher. You're doing such great work. It's so important what you're doing. You know, they'll, they'll give you this. There's all these social benefits from being a teacher. Um, and I'm actually going to link an article uh, that I wrote a couple years ago about teaching. And uh, in it, I linked to a Zen Pencils comic. And I don't, I don't like Zen Pencils, but probably for obvious reasons when you look at them it has these like this couple at this dinner party and one of them is making fun of this teacher for like being a teacher that has never happened to me and will never happen and i don't know who's ever really had that happen to them maybe like once in a in a blue moon you have somebody actually call you out uh for being a teacher but that's not really going to happen um uh, there's usually a lot of social benefits because the profession's so hyped up, it's so ingrained. You just get told over and over again, like teachers are so important, teachers are so important, teachers are the best, teachers are great, it's a virtuous, virtuous profession, right? Uh, you know that that it's really hard to um, to take a step back and, and question that. And uh, certainly, you're not going to see probably at a dinner party someone question you for that. Um, let's let's talk about are teachers hardworking? So they can't be virtuous because there's no such thing as a virtuous profession. Are they hardworking? Well, if you look at the number of hours they work and the total compensation that they receive, um, it's it's not that bad. I'm going to get my calculator out here, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to say there's 180 school days in a year. There might be more, there might be less, depending on the school times. Um, six hours of actual work because you do have a prep, and uh, so we're just going to say about six hours of work um, equals about 1,080 hours of work in a year. Now. So we're going to divide, let's just say $60,000 is um, wages plus benefits for like a second or third year teacher. Divided by 1,080 hours equals $55 an hour. Is that a bad pay rate? You guys tell me, is $55 an hour a bad pay rate? I'm going to guess most of you are going to say, no, it's not a bad pay rate. Okay. So I just did my math for you. It's there. Teachers, and this is not a super experienced teachers. As teachers make more and more money, like my district pays a hundred grand uh, for teachers, right? That not including benefits, like a hundred thousand dollars salary plus benefits for teachers that have uh, been in the profession for more than twenty years. Um, that's a lot, man. That is a lot of money to be paid, considering the amount of hours that you actually work. And you're gonna hear teachers complain all the time. It's like we work so many hours off the clock. It's like like every other salaried profession on earth. Right. Um, if you if you get a salary from Apple Computer, they don't care how many hours you work. They care that you do the job. OK, so it's it's a salaried profession. Um, if you're working the extra hours, that's basically your choice. But you're only required to be there like six hours a day. And uh, then you do have a couple months off in the summer and you have a lot of days off in between. So the hourly wage of teachers is actually quite competitive. Um, there is this idea that there's a teacher shortage. There is not a teacher shortage, by the way. Um, there's only a teacher shortage. It's only hard to find people in very specific subjects, and that's like high school math and high school science. The reason is because people who have degrees in like biochemistry uh, can make a lot more money than the going right for a first year teacher by working in a lab or something like that, right? But because we have this like you know collective bargaining agreement. Uh, it ends up really cutting the pay of people who would have degrees that have value outside the teaching profession. So most of the degrees inside the teaching profession don't really have value outside of it. English degrees, not a lot of job for jobs for English majors out there, are there? Not a lot of jobs for history majors. But uh, if you have those degrees and you're a teacher, you're going to find real quick, there is no teacher shortage. You will have a very hard time finding a job. Good luck uh, because there's a lot of you out there. So 
that teacher shortage idea. It's just not out there. There's a lot of people lining up to be teachers in those particular subjects because that, that pay to work ratio is pretty high. And let's not forget the value of job security. If you've worked at a job for more than two years, at least here in California, you get tenure. Tenure makes it so it costs a, a district about a million bucks to fire you. And it makes it very difficult to do. It becomes a litigation thing, becomes a lawsuit thing. And um, essentially, once you get to that third year, you're set. They can't really fire you for being incompetent. What does that do? Well, if you have an incompetent teacher fall through the cracks, they're there forever. And I'm sure some of you have had some of those incompetent teachers. Uh, that's the reality about the profession. It's not like a super low paying profession um, as if you look at it from, from those particular odds. And people complain about grading papers. I'm like, you assigned the papers. Um, if you really cared about how much work you had to do, you would just give yourself less work to do, right? Okay. Um, let's talk about this other idea that teachers are important, right? You know, kids are important. Kids are the future. Of course, kids are important, right? And of course, they're the future. They're the most important economic unit. The most important thing that you do economically is produce children because somebody has to make the goods and services for when you are old or when you are dead. Like they're, they're the ones who continue the economy. So that's pretty important. But I'm going to give you the economist, the good old economist answer. Important compared to what, right? Teaching profession is important compared to what? Let's imagine that your garbage man stopped picking up your garbage. Well, within a couple of weeks, uh, you might be quite annoyed. Let's imagine that the people who work on your city sewer, work on your fresh water system, that they just decided not to work. Woo, you would now have, uh, you know, you'd be up to your knees in crap and you'd have cholera because uh, that city sanitation system is what prevented cholera prevents cholera. Cholera was a real thing that killed lots of people and not that long ago, right? And it still kills lots of people in places like Africa that don't have um, nice little sanitation systems. So where is the sanitation worker day? Where's the national sanitation worker day? Because compared to sanitation workers, uh, teachers are not that important. If you just keep going down the list, firefighters, ambulance drivers, police, those are the obvious ones. I think police get their own day too. Um, what about somebody who works on your telecommunications network that keeps your phone working, right? What would happen if they all decided not to work tomorrow? Yeah, you'd be, you'd, we'd be in trouble. What, ha what about the people who work on the power grid, right? We'd be in trouble if those people stopped working tomorrow. What about the people who do all the maintenance that's required for you to live an urban life? What about the people who grow your food, right? What if somebody who's like, you know, <clears throat> probably need to go spray, spray my corn. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna let it sit. Uh, well, yeah, we would be we'd be dead when pe if people stopped um, making their food after a while, right? We'd be in, we'd at least experience famine while we had to try, try to make our own food. But if you imagine teachers all said we're not going to teach tomorrow, what would happen? Probably nothing, right? Uh, oh, little Johnny didn't learn his math lesson, which he didn't want to learn anyway, and he's going to forget tomorrow because he hates math. Ooh. Ooh, big impact on society right there. Now, the bigger impact is really that, like, what do we do with the kids? Because now we, we have school is like our child care for seven or eight hours a day. Uh, that would be the bigger problem. Not so much like the kids did not learn. And for those of you who are watching this, I guarantee you that you've done plenty of learning without teachers. That if teachers were not there to teach you, I guarantee you would still do lots of learning. Um I know that there's somebody who watches my videos and is on my channel who taught himself Japanese and became like a translator, right? And uh, that like invented his profession with his own will. I think he's German. Um, that's pretty awesome. But it goes to show that you don't need a teacher to teach you, right? You're your own best teacher. If there were no teachers, people would still go out and acquire the skills they need to go produce goods and services. They'd go out and uh, get the knowledge that they need to function every day and uh, you probably wouldn't have any real negative impact on society. You might have a positive impact on society as uh, as opportunity costs are realigned to, to, to benefit people directly. Um, so if teachers stop teaching tomorrow, it would take a long time, even if like teachers were necessary to teach, it'd take a long time for that to have an impact. And we all know that teachers are not really necessary to teach. Just as an example, um, I'm a music teacher and people will often be like, well, you know, um, 
how do I how do I play guitar like you? And I'm just like, it's practice, man. You just get the guitar out and practice every day, and eventually you get good at it. And they're like, well, I mean, like, I mean, can you show me how? It's like I can show you how to practice. Like I can't show you how to be good because I, I I could show you how to do the things I do, but you have to go practice them. It's you that does it, right? When you're learning a skill, it's you that does it. It's you that's really the teacher. It's you practicing. It's you putting in the effort. It's you reinforcing all the concepts. A teacher just says like, here's the concept. Here's what you do. And I, uh, me as a music teacher, I'm like, here's how you practice. I've forged this path of knowing how to practice. I'll show you how to practice this so that you can get good. But you have to go put in the 20 hours in the next week to really learn this if you want to come back and get a full full value out of an hour lesson with me. Like one hour translates to 20 hours of practice. That's how I think of it, okay? One hour of instruction, 20 hours of practice. That's you, man. I'm doing like less than 5% of the work as the teacher you're doing 95 percent of the work as a student and that's the way it ought to be you are your own you are your own best teacher that's the that's the truth of the matter so are teachers that important <clears throat> not really are teachers uh particularly virtuous they cannot be uh, only individuals can be virtuous there are good teachers there are bad teachers i'll let you think about how many bad teachers there are to good teachers um are teachers particularly hardworking? some are some are not on paper uh the the pay the paper hour is generally pretty all right, you know, even for a, um, a teacher who's just sort of starting out in the profession. Um, so anyway, that's mostly most of what I think about um, teaching. The reason that I like to distance myself as a teacher, if I go to a party and I'm like, ah, I'm not a teacher, you know, partly I don't want to be associated. I don't want people to be like, oh, you're a teacher. That's great. You're for the, ch you're the children, most important job, <sighs> right? Um, I don't want to be given benefits, social benefits, by being a teacher. I want, I, want, I want the benefits from me being me. And you think about it, it's really stupid. You're like, what are, what do you do? What do you do? I'm a garbage man. It's like, oh, okay. I guess that's shouldn't have asked that question. You are not just what you do. You're lots of things besides what you do for a living. And I don't want to. Be, I don't want people to think I'm cool because I'm a teacher or I'm good. I'm a good person because I'm a teacher. And I don't want like all the all the social baggage that comes with like, now I have to talk about what I do as a teacher and I don't really want to talk about that. I'd rather talk about this book I'm writing because that's what I really, really care about right now. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a good teacher. I work hard. I make sure I do my job really well, but it's not everything that I am, right? I don't want to, I don't want to go there. But a lot of teachers have this ego built into it because you have to. Uh, you have to like create the importance of the, of the, of the, um, of the profession. Teachers talk so much about how important they are to the world um, because there's no tangible product to teaching for most subjects. I teach music um, when I have my band well rehearsed and they go on stage and they play a song, parents clap, they're like, I see that these kids have learned that piece and they've learned how to perform that. Like there's a there's like a product there. But for most subjects, that's not the case, right? Most subjects, it's nowhere near the case so you, teachers have to invent the importance of what they do because they can't point to it they can't point to a phone that they picked up and like you know my phone works i designed it and here you go here's this video um <clears throat> here's this video software i developed um and you don't you can't really point to that so you have to kind of invent all of these big lies about the profession they are kind of big lies people just repeat these things over and over again i talked about the big lie in another video um, until people just believe them. And I want to question that. Listen, man, there are good teachers out there. There are great teachers out there. They're not all good. They're not all great. We need to appreciate the people that do important things for us every single day, more than just as much, if not more than teachers, right? Appreciate the teachers who did something good, but don't appreciate the teachers who did something bad. Don't like me because I'm a teacher. Like me because I've delivered some freaking value to you. That's what I want to do. I want to give you value. Let me give it to you, please. Um, I want to give you some value. I don't want to. I don't want to just be like, oh, he's a teacher. And really great, you know. Yeah, anyway, that's what I think about that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know what you want to see and what you want to hear in the future. I know this one's a little bit off topic, but I feel like it's important to me. So I'm going to talk about it, and maybe it's important to you. Please give me your thoughts about the profession, about your schooling experience, especially your compulsory schooling experience. Let me know. Uh, exactly what you think about that and exactly what you think about the profession and all the social benefits that go with it, uh, especially if you don't share my perspective. Thanks. You guys have a great day.